How are you? I want to continue with the topic of, should I say, Zionism. I really have to bring up um, these very, very important things. I watched a video today, um, somebody talking about Zionism and, you know, what's wrong with it, Christian Zionism and what's wrong with it and how it's not biblical and People, I agreed with this person on almost every point, except what do you think? Of course, the fact, or not the fact, but his belief that the rapture is not going to happen. He was trying to say 1 Thessalonians 4 has something to do with the resurrection. Yes, it does. But he left out a vital, important thing, and that is also the catching up of the people that are still alive while the resurrection is happening. Of course, that's what the rapture is. First, those who are dead will be resurrected. Yes, absolutely. And then those who are still alive will be caught up with them in the air. Where? In the New Jerusalem. And that is a very important teaching. You can't ignore it. Same thing with First Corinthians 15. How can you ignore the resurrection and the catching up of the bride at the same time? What happens with those people that are still alive? Will they get a transformed body? How will it happen? Well, First Thessalonians 4 and First Corinthians 15 tell us exactly. And we cannot just throw it out. This guy was making fun of it and saying, oh, they're not going to be just taken out and uh, taken off to a planet. No, who is even saying that? I'm not saying teach anything contrary to what the Bible says. But stick with the Bible. There's going to be a catching up of the bride. And the bride is supposed to uh, hide themselves in the new Jerusalem, in the chambers, in the rooms that Jesus prepares right now until the wrath has passed. No, there's not going to be a seven-year seven tribulation time. Yes, I understand. Now, this person did not mention dispensationalism once. But he talked about Schofield, how he brought this false teaching of Christian Zionism in the churches. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. He also said, oh, this Christian Zionism is having two plans or, yeah, two plans of salvation. One for the Jews and one for the heathen. People, if you have followed my videos, you know that's not the truth. That's not what the Bible says. I have shown that absolutely clear, clearly. And yes, I don't understand how these people, these Christians, I'll call them Christian Zionists, how in the world they can preach that. Because that's not what the Bible says. It's a false teaching. It's false theology. And people are not realizing it. I used to be in these kinds of churches. Okay? Dispensational churches. I used to be in that. But I knew my Bible. I knew what Paul taught. And eventually I woke up and said, well, that can't be right. Because what did Paul teach? Paul taught that there's only one salvation. Paul preached the same salvation to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And so did Peter. Be, people, we know that. Read um, read uh, 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 Acts. Same gospel went to the Jews first. And I have said that over and over again. And then to the Gentiles. So that's the first point why Christian Zionism 
is a false theology. It's a false theology. That's the first point. What's the second point? Well, the second point is that the Jews will have seven years during this seven-year tribulation time where they will accept the Lord and, you know, preach the gospel. Um, into this world. I don't find that either, people. No. See, the seven-year tribulation time that they have invented is the last week of Daniel. And the last week of Daniel is fulfilled because the last week of Daniel went specifically to the lost sheep of Israel. That's true. But it's already fulfilled. Until they rejected the gospel when they killed Stephen. Stephen preached the gospel again openly to the Jews and they rejected it. And they stoned him. And that is when finally then the gospel went also to the Gentiles. And the Jews rejected it more and more. And the Jews then after the uh, temple was destroyed, created their own religious system. Yeah, because there was no more way for them to be saved. And they didn't get it. People, they didn't get it. They're still not getting it today. They're still rejecting Messiah. And if they reject Messiah, they also reject the Father. We see that in um, John, and I have read that before. Okay, let's go to John, and I'm going to get out of here. John, oh, actually, it's First John. First John. Uh, let me, so First John 2, we start with 20. But you have an anointment from the Holy Spirit, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. They have the Holy Spirit. Who is the liar? It is whosoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one denies the Son has the Father. Whosoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So these people do not believe really in the Father. They have their own God that they are praying to. And do they know it? No, they think they're actually praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And no, it is not. Even if they do, that God is not acknowledging them. Not at all, because they have not acknowledged the Son. And they're also called Antichrist, because they do not acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh, or that he is the Christ. So this is a very important thing in the Zionist Christians support people like that. And they support their beliefs, making them think that they have the correct religion, that their practices are correct. They're encouraging them to choose to go back to the old covenant. They don't want to tell them, hey, you guys got divorced. I said that in my last video. So go back to my last video if you have not seen it. Zionist Christians mislead not only 
other Christians by teaching them false doctrine, false theology. But they also mislead the Jews. They're extremely deceived, very deceived people. Then they invented and let the Jews believe, but I think it's especially a Christian Zionist um, demand that people will bless Israel, falsely interpret what the Bible says. There is not one scripture that says, if you bless Israel, that you will be blessed yourself. Let's go to that verse, Genesis 12, and see what God says. And believe me, if you find another one that tells that we're supposed to be blessing the state of Israel or even the Jewish people today, let me know. This is the verse that they're using, Genesis 12. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. So God is blessing Abraham. I will make your name great. I will be a bless. I mean, and you will be a blessing. Listen, people. Abraham will be a blessing. How is he going to be a blessing? How is he going to be a blessing? Because from him will come the Messiah who will bless everybody, who will save everybody. I will bless those who bless you. Wait a minute, what? I will bless those who bless you. Who is the you? The you is Abraham. People who bless Abraham, those will be blessed people. And whosoever, whosoever curses you will be cursed. Cursed. And all people on the earth will be blessed through you. Do you understand that? It doesn't say bless Israel any where not one place now do these people that spill that out constantly oh we need to bless israel or else we're not going to be blessed do you know how many people run around in our government that spill that out constantly oh we need we need to bless israel or else we're not going to be blessed it doesn't say that it says here that through abraham Actually, we will be blessed. How will we be blessed? And all people on earth will be blessed through Abraham. How's that possible? He's dead. Is he using the Jews today? No. He's using his descendant, which is his seed, which is singular, which is Jesus Christ. Not the Jews. The Jews don't bless anybody. They don't bless people. They treat them like goy, which are dogs. That's what they do. They don't bless anybody. But it says right here, if, you, if they think they have to do something, it's the other way around. Israel or the Jews should be blessing the world if they're Abraham's descendants. But no, this blessing is really, and all people on earth will be blessed through you, Abraham. When they bless Abraham, how do they bless Abraham? When they believe Abraham, what Abraham has taught. Abraham taught, Abraham taught that there's going to be a Messiah coming that will save all people in this world. Not just the Jews, not just the Hebrews, not, not just Israel. No, all people. And why are they misinterpreting or misquoting this? I mean, they're going to tell you Genesis 12, 1 through 3. They will tell you that. 
but they misquote it. Another one they misquote is, and I don't know exactly where it is, but that we are supposed to pray for the peace of what? Jerusalem? Yeah, who would not want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem? But if their own people are not bringing in peace, why would I pray for peace? And how can I pray for peace when the Israel, when Israel, the Israelites, the Israelis are going against uh, having peace in Israel? If we're supposed to be praying for the peace of Israel, I would think that the Israeli people should start with the peace effort. A peace effort will never come through war. Never, people. Never. It will be never peace. Has never happened. Never ever. That peace really comes through destroying um, everything. Eventually, people will start to rebel again. It's just the way it is. They will remember they have been, you know, um, put down, they have been, yeah, whatever, and they will rebel. Peace only comes by making peace, by living peaceful together. And do people want that? Yes. But where you find that inscription, I think it's in Psalms, somewhere in the Psalms. That was a long time ago. That's when people were supposed to pray, and not people of the world, but the, the Jewish people. It's really the Israel of God, or the Israel, or Israel, the Hebrew people, were supposed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They should be doing that today. But hey, isn't that hypocritical? If I make war and I pray for the peace of Israel? People, praying for the peace of Israel does not mean, oh, we're praying that the enemies of Israel will, will be destroyed. No, peace is peace. Peace means that people live together in harmony. But it's false. It's again this false interpretation that comes from the theology of Christian, Christian Zionism. It's a false theology, and yes, for the past 50 years, that has been preached in most evangelical churches. This is a horrible, horrible theology. And it's not even biblical. It's not only horrible and hypocritical, but it doesn't reflect what the Bible says, and Again, my question is, do people even read the Bible? Do people even read the Bible? Where in the world or how were they so blinded? How were they so blinded? I don't understand it. If you know it, let me know. Please share. Of course, if you keep rejecting the truth over and over again, you will be stuck in darkness, in utter darkness. And maybe that's what people have been done. Again, this Christian Zionism comes from dispensationalism. And have I not said so much about dispensationalism, how wrong it is? Yeah, you accept one false teaching and you will open the door for a lot more. And that's what, of course, has happened. But it's not only that people, you know, from the time of the Reformation, we just have not reformed, or should we? You can't reform the Catholic Church, can you? It's impossible. No, instead of just saying, nope, that's it, we're starting from scratch, which is from the Bible. We try to reform, 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 and never really changed everything. 
No, we are still, most churches are still stuck in mo or lots of Catholicism. And I think the hierarchy is one of these things. Hierarchy of the church is one of them. This is how the people are misled. Because not everybody admits or knows that they have the Holy Spirit and they have to make sure that the body stays clean. No, we trust some of these teachers that come in that they're false teachers and we trust them and we go along with them and we're not going to the Bible and checking things out. There used to be uh, this guy named Blackaby and I don't know if anybody remembers him from the 70s, 80s, way back, Blackaby. And this guy had the right idea. He really believed and he did wrote a, a, a workbook that everybody in the church is having the Holy Spirit and everybody is supposed to be using the Holy Spirit. Of course, when you say that 50% of the church members don't have anything to say, you shut their mouth. And I hope you know who, you who I'm talking about. 50% is all the women they have no right to talk. They have to shut up if you say that. Of course, already you invite false teachings into the church or you leave false teaching in the church. Yeah, we never cleaned our church out or we never really started from scratch during the Reformation. And so, yeah, we went down again really fast, the, sip, the slippery slope. And today we invited every false teaching, every false theology into our churches. And it's almost impossible to actually still go to a church that is not corrupt. Really, I mean, do you know anybody? This guy... I thought, wow, great, great, great theology. I mean, yes, he's reading the Bible. Doesn't interrupt. Very, very good. And then what does he do? Then he rejects the rapture. I don't know him very much. But, and I'm not going to listen to his videos either. Because, yeah, he says, you know, Oh, we don't believe in dispensationalism. But I'll guarantee that he believes some other things. And he didn't really clean everything out. Because if he would have cleaned everything out and redefined everything in dispensationalism, everything, he would not have thrown out the rapture. Yes, the word is not in the Bible. I understand. But then go to the Bible, read First, the First Thessalonians 4 and see what it says. Yes, it uses the word, word catch up. But who is being caught up? It's not the dead. Okay? It's not the dead. It's the ones that are alive. So if that event is happening, then we need to th think, where does it go on the timeline? And then we have to really, really research to find out where that event takes place. Instead of throwing it out, redefining everything. And obviously he didn't do that either. So now he's preaching really good stuff and mixes it in with 1% interpretation. Why? Because he left out a very important fact. And that's the catching up of the people that are still alive when Jesus returns and when the re resurrection happens. And people that's not during the time when the angels Gather the elect. That's not the catching up. Remember, catching up does not mean gather. 
And people are caught up in there in one minute with the Lord. And in a twinkling of eye, they're changed. Their body is changed. That is not gathered. And I just want to add that. Because it's very, very sad that these people then reject a very important fact about our Christian living and our hope. Because that's our hope. It's our hope that someday we will be caught up and that we will be changed in a twinkle in the eye, that we will be with the Lord, especially those people that are still alive. We are going to be dead. Yes, we will be resurrected and we'll, be, we'll, get, we'll get a new body. Of course. But not all of us are going to be dead because Jesus is coming very soon. If you don't know that yet, I feel sorry for you. Anyways, I'm coming to an end. Think about these things again. The lies of Christian Zionism. And I'm sure I did not say them all. Well, hey, watch my previous videos I have said a whole bunch more, like the thing with the temple, false lie, okay? Antichrist thing, false lie, false lie, false lie, false lie. Go, go to playlist and go under dispensationalism. And it tells you all the false lies of dispensationalism. Yes, they are false. I'm not a dispensationalist. But just because I'm not a dispensationalist... I will not throw away scripture and I will not bend it and, 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 and twist it so it fits my belief. I'm not going to do that because that's what a lot of people do. Oh, okay, dispensationalism is wrong, so we'll just throw out the rapture because that's what they do. Throw out rapture. Now, of course, people will think about uh, Christian Zionism, and they're saying, oh, that's false too. Okay, good. That's all good. Because we need to stick to what the Bible is saying. Because if we close our eyes to one thing, then we end up having our eyes closed totally. Coming to an end, my, knee, my dear friends. Let the Holy Spirit really, really guide you. He's the only one who can show us the truth. And where do we see the truth? Only in the Bible. Only in the Bible. 